Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you some of my pottery. Before we get started, please consider liking and subscribing. So I don't know if I've actually talked about ceramics or pottery or wheel throwing and stuff on this channel before, but I used to take ceramics when I took it all through high school and I was uh, like obsessed with pottery and wheel throwing and stuff like that. And I did it for four years straight, like any every single day for four years. And then I went to college and my school didn't have it. And so I wasn't able to do it for a couple of years. But then the summer camp that I teach at, they have a ceramic studio. So I was able to start doing it again. So because my family moved when I was five years ago, I don't know, uh, we moved out of the house that I grew up in in Boston and uh, all of my pottery basically was put into boxes and put somewhere. And every couple of years I find it and it resurfaces, but I always forget to grab some of it. And so I don't actually have I think any of my pottery around me normally and I really miss it a lot and um, even though I haven't made ceramics in a while I have some old stuff that I just resurfaced that I just refound recently because unfortunately over the summer my grandfather passed away and a couple weeks ago my family went and cleared out his apartment and they found a bunch of the old pottery that I had made him as like birthday and Christmas presents over the years and so now I have a bunch of my old ceramics back from him that I had given him over the years and it's a bunch of stuff that I think will really go well with my plants. It's like under pots and then pots which are really cool and so I'm going to show you guys those things now and try to incorporate them into my plant collection. So I thought that would be a cool thing to do for today's video. So the first one that I want to show you guys is an underpot. This one is a little bit weird. I would sort of do, I don't know, if I, if I didn't like a piece that I was working on, I would kind of just like make it really weird and then fire it and see how it ended up. And that's sort of what this is. But here is this underpot. The glazing is also not the cutest. But it's basically this wheel thrown dish. This is the bottom. It's not very pretty. And the top part, for whatever reason, I decided to like pull it like this to like make the edges an, this interesting like jagged shape. But in doing that, I made it really sharp <laughs> after it fired. And so it's like kind of like cracking and clearly just not. It's like an interesting technique, but it's not a good idea for like something that someone's going to be handling. But I thought that this would make a great underpot for something. And yeah, again, the glazing, I mean, it's cool, <laughs> but not, not my best. But yeah, this is, this is the first one. And then the next one, this is also an underpot. I think this is pretty early on in my ceramics times because it is the workmanship is not the best. Uh, but the glazing is better on this one, I think. This is an under pot that has this like cream and then green glazing on it. There's a little drippage there. I would always do my glazing sort of willy-nilly because I absolutely loved the act of throwing things on the wheel. And then for some reason, I wouldn't put enough effort into the glazing. So like this streaking here, this is because I didn't mix the glazing well enough and it should all be this like light color, but... I guess 15 year old me didn't didn't want to put that much effort into the glazing but this one is sort of like the walls are a little bit thick the bottom is not not the best and i think i even punctured a hole in it and then had to like repair the hole but yeah this was a, a wheel thrown dish that i think will also make a very good under pot for some plants and then the last under pot that i have uh, this, I think, yeah, there's a date on the bottom, um, April 29th, 2014. So this is like my, a year before I graduated. So I've been doing ceramics for three years at this point, And I had sort of honed my craft a little bit better. Uh, and that is this one. That is this like half white, half blue, nice little dish like this. On the bottom, it says... <laughs> Or G-Paw, happy birthday from Tate um, with the date on it. So clearly a birthday present for him. Yeah, because his birthday was in May. So yeah, this one, the glazing, again, not the best here. But if you can see the pooling of it there, it's really beautiful. I loved this glaze when I was in high school because it would pool so interestingly. And on the side here too, there's a hole. But look at the, 
the coloring of that. It's absolutely beautiful. So I think this one also will make a really great underpot because you can just like fill up the thing with water and I think I'll find a, a nice a nice plant to put this in. And this little white part on the bottom here, that's because the glaze actually dripped here and I had to go and wear it down so that it wasn't sharp on the bottom there. But yeah, here's this one. And then, oh, I guess this one was sitting in the frame the whole time. So I'll show you guys this one. This is a pot that I guess I made in October, October 23rd, 2012. So like nine years ago. So I've been doing ceramics for a very long time, even if it's on and off. Um, this is the pot that I made. You can see I clearly wanted to do some interesting textures on here. I can clearly see that this is with a needle tool, if anybody does ceramics. Um, I threw this pot and then used a needle tool, which is basically just like a pin on a stick. And like, as the wheel was spinning, went up and down with it to create that texture there. And then did the same thing here, but for whatever reason, it's like chunky and sort of sharp. But this glazing, I think this is the similar glazing from what I used to use, and it's just absolutely stunning. I don't know if my ring light is helping with the, the visual here, but you can see on the inside how beautiful that glazing is. This stuff is cool. This is called high fire glazing, or at least that's what we called it at my studio. And um, there's like the sort of glazing where you just put it on like a paint, a color me mine sort of situation where you just like take the color and you have like the little disc and you can see that that's what it looks like. And you put like pink and then the thing comes out pink. This is sort of like you put on this stuff that looks like it's like brown sludge and you trust that it's going to turn out really well. And in the kiln, it like actually melts it so that it like drips down and causes all these beautiful textures, not even textures, but just like patterning. And it can be a little bit unpredictable, but it always turns out so beautifully. And yeah, that's the kind of stuff that I always really used to like. And the foot of this is much better. You can see how I trimmed that. Um, but yeah, I want to put, I want to use this as a cash po and put a, a plant in here that's already in the nursery pot. So I think after I finish showing you guys all these, I'm gonna put these around my room. And then the last one, this is my favorite one of all, I think, and that is this very sweet little vase that I made. This one also, the glazing is beautiful. Um, it's mostly this white color, and then you have blue here. I hope this is focusing. You have this blue color, and then another part that's this brown that's dipped in here. This is the brown. And then this is the mixture between the blue and the brown. And on the inside, it looks really cool. And I just love the form of this. And you can see all the lines on here. These are the wheel throwing lines. Um, and the bottom, the glaze dripped a little bit. And you can see this is my old, I was trying to have a signature. It was like three triangles. Um, it didn't really catch on, but I just like holding this one, you can like, tell that I threw it like this. Um, yeah, and I think this one will make a really cute thing to put a plant into. Yeah. Um, okay, so those are all of the pieces that I have. I think I'm going to now look around my room and see what I can put into these or what I can put the cash pose under. Let's do it. Okay, for the first one, I think I'm going to grab this Peperomia Hope that I have over here because it is very much top heavy and I want to see if I can give it a heavier pot so that it doesn't completely tip over on me. So it's also very intermingled, like intertwined with a lot of stuff. So. Okay, so this is the Peperomia Hope that did not look like this when I left for the summer, but it's currently in just like a little plastic nursery pot here. So I think I'm going to maybe try to put it into this one. Shall we see? It's perfect. Oh my gosh, that looks so cute. Also it is covered in hair for some reason, but Look at how perfect that looks. Like you can't even see the nursery pot and it's so much less top heavy <laughs> because it has this pot to sit in. Oh, that's adorable. I'm obsessed with that. Ooh, okay. Um, stick the 
guys back up there for now. Okay. Only lost a bunch of leaves off of that plant in the process of doing that. So now let's do this one. I think I want to put something tall into this one. So this. This is my variegated sort of struggling but doing fine variegated peace lily. So this is a, the pot is a little bit big for this, but oh. I kind of like that. Is that cute? Does that look nice? This is crazy. I've never seen plants in my pottery before. Okay, I like that. Put that right back there. It looks so cute. Okay, now I think I'm going to put, use this and put it under my Raphidophore decursiva that's over here. I want to repot this one, repot, repot this because I don't like this plastic thing that it's in, but at least it's not, it's catch pot is not a um, takeout container lid anymore. So that's better. Nice. And then we have this one. So a small one, I think. And put this. Oh, by the way, if you're watching from my propagating my very good string of hearts drama, for those who didn't think that I was doing it correctly, here are the roots on all of them. No matter what direction I put them in, there are roots on all of these because it doesn't matter what direction you put the hearts in as long as there's nodes and they're doing fine. Thank you if you reached out to me about that, but it doesn't matter which way the things go. Because it's not like a pothos where you can put it upside down. Anyway, with this one, I think I'm going to put it under here. I have my one of my Hoya Carnosa Compactas here. I'm going to put this right there. Aww. I think that looks cute. These blues are slightly different. And that would annoy me, but I'm not allowing it to. I think that looks great. Okay, and then this last one. What should we put this under? What do you think? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, let's do pink princess. Oh, not pink princess. Uh, pink lady. Nope. Pink lady. Nope. What is this? Painted lady. This one that is struggling that maybe would like more water. So now that it has a oh, that doesn't look great. Whatever. <laughs> it needs a little bit of a bigger pot to go. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, should I try it on my alocasia? That also needs more water. One second. One second. Bring it back over this way. My alocasia fry deck. Aha, much better. Okay. Can you see that? That looks like it fits better. Okay. And that one had a plastic one on it anyway, so. Okay, well that was me playing around with my pottery from my youth times. I had, for full, full transparency, I had planned, oh, I have a lot of headroom here. I had planned on shooting a series of videos at camp this past summer because there was a ceramic studio there and I wanted to shoot. I had like a whole thing of I wanted to shoot me making a pot all the way through the end of me putting plants into that pot. But I was so busy at camp this summer that I didn't get time to throw anything. So that unfortunately didn't happen. But I really hope at some point to be able to join a ceramic studio here in New York and be able to make pottery again and maybe make pots for you guys and sell them to you guys and stuff like that. Because I really love it and it's a thing that I miss doing and it's just a very satisfying thing to do. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking this video or subscribing to my channel or both if you're feeling fancy. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.